last class we discussed about uh, kelvin planck statement and heat injection we cannot construct single reservoir heat injection or 100% efficiency heat injection practically not feasible okay we discussed that one. today's class we will discuss about glacier statement and refrigeration and heat so first of all uh, we move to the statement what is glacier statement actually heat is flowing from high temperature to low temperature if you are creating temperature difference automatically heat flow from high temperature to low temperature but i want to move the heat from low temperature to high temperature so against the nature first of all why the thought came to the picture what is the necessity that as a natural phenomena water from higher head to lower head it will come but lower head to higher head what is the density of water means from our household it is what we are doing by surface pump using surface pump we are lifting the water to the lower head tank then after by gravity we are using or in telangana districts we know telangana kaleshwaram process they lifted water from 500 feet height for agriculture purpose general utilization of the land because water table is available down so some requirements are there from against the nature we want to lift the uh, heat from low temperature to high temperature what are the requirements maybe some of the requirements okay maybe some of the requirements i will discuss because without purpose what is the necessity to lift the water? heat from low temperature to high temperature one is to show the perishable goods agriculture produce are anywhere we want to produce cooling effect that atmosphere want to cool <coughs> then only long lasting of perishable goods you know. so refrigeration facility we are calling second one uh, the best one human comfort air conditioning not air cooling in winter we required heating of the air in summer we required cooling of the air finally human comfort basically these two major application transfer of heat from low temperature to high temperature is required then what glacier statement glacier uh, mentioned second law of uh, thermodynamics the second statement the first statement energy conversion statement coming to the glacier statement energy transfer statement i want to transfer the heat from low temperature to high temperature high temperature to low temperature practically it is feasible there is no issue by nature the natural act activity itself heat always flow from high temperature to low temperature for our comfort we want to transfer heat from low temperature to high temperature what he mentioned heat cannot flow of itself from low temperature body to high temperature body unless otherwise you are spending some energy by using a mediator you are spending some energy by using a mediator then only heat flow will takes place from low temperature to high temperature right statement means heat cannot flow of itself from low temperature body to high temperature body without any effect on the surroundings work must be spended to do so so i want to like uh, pumps water pumps how we are using like that heat pumps we are using to transfer the heat from low temperature body to high temperature that pumps <coughs> we are spending some energy through the pump for transferring of the energy from low temperature to so one statement energy generation sorry energy conversion that is a kelvin planck statement another statement is energy transfer so based on the kelvin planck statement clausius statement the construction of refrigeration and heat pumps are coming to picture okay construction is same if your desired effect is cooling then it is called refrigerator if your desired effect is heating it is called heat pump that's all both devices 
are using to transfer the heat from low temperature to high temperature. That's all. The basic law behind so many cycles are there. Uh, vapor uh, compression refrigeration cycle or vapor absorption refrigeration cycle. Different cycles are there. Uh, I am explaining uh, the commercially available. Why? Right? Because it, it may be useful for you and uh, we can visualize the things. It is easy to uh, visualize the thing. That is the main reason. But what is the basic science? P B equal to MRT. We all know gas law, natural gas law. V by M, specific volume, is constant. Because in the cycle, whatever the working fluid we are selecting, that fluid is fixed. In refrigeration cycle, whatever the fluid we are using, that fluid is called the refrigerant. At present, commercially, we are using R134A refrigerant. Okay, V by M is constant. Then we are increasing pressure means temperature will increase. We are decreasing pressure means temperature will increase. Ultimately, what we are doing, we are increasing pressure when I want to reject the heat. We are decreasing pressure when I want to absorb the heat. That's a basic principle, whatever the cycle is there. Okay, I will, I will explain one. Uh, we have commercially available cycle, vapor compression, refrigeration cycle. You can see, it constitutes of compressor, condenser, Expansion wall or throttle wall, whatever it will be, next evaporator. So, first we will visualize the components, then we will get a clear idea about the working. This evaporator you can visualize in refrigerator, deep freezer. Deep freezer is the evaporator, you can touch that uh, sense of uh, flow of fluid, sense you can sense the vibration. Evaporator means deep freezer, continuously absorbing. Whatever the heat it is absorbing, it want to reject. Why? Because in cyclic operation, same refrigerant we are using. It want to reject means at the evaporated temperature, it can't reject. It can absorb the heat only. It can't reject. But because the temperature must be more than ambient, then only it will reject. So I want to raise the temperature of the heat absorbed refrigerant to condenser means more than ambient temperature. So what we can do, I already mentioned natural gas law, PV equal to MRT. I am increasing the pressure means automatically temperature will increase. So what we are doing by using compressor, this low temperature vapor is compressing and further we are raising the temperature. Okay. So the work we are adding means automatically work has converted as heat only. Further temperature rise will take place and the temperatures will reach more than ambient temperature. The ambient temperature is maximum 45. Here we are reaching 60 degrees. Then heat rejection will take place at condenser. Whatever the heat absorbed at the evaporator, whatever the heat absorbed at the evaporator and whatever the work we supplied in the compressor combinedly reject at the condenser. After rejecting high pressure, High temperature liquid we are getting. Again, it want to absorb the heat means the temperature must be lower than the evaporator temperatures. What we are doing? We are doing. We, we can place the turbine also. But I already mentioned vapor expansion means we'll get more energy, thousand times higher. But liquid expansion means we'll get less energy. So unnecessary component we are increasing. Instead of that, what we are doing, we are replacing the throttle wall or expansion wall or capillary tube based on the capacity change. This condenser, you can visualize the refrigerator backside, fin structure is there. Compressor is backside down, it is, it is available compressor. In throttle wall, capillary bunch is available in downside near a compressor itself. So in the throttle wall, are capillary to what they are doing without changing the enthalpy heat value. They are reducing the temperatures and pressures. Pressures they are reducing and automatically temperature will reduce to reach the evaporator coil temperature. So throttling process enthalpy is not changing. Just we are reducing pressure automatically temperature is reducing. Again this liquid is entering into the evaporator absorbing the heat and convert as a vapor that vapor is compressing. So cyclic operation.
You see, this cycle I shown anti-clockwise direction. I already mentioned. Power generation means we are representing in clockwise direction. Power absorption means anti-clockwise direction. Same. Both are same. Coming to the <coughs> performance. COP. Coefficient of performance. Here we are calling this one as a COP. Why I will explain. Uh, COP means efficiency only. Desired output by required input. Required input W net QH minus QL only. How much heat is uh, rejected at condenser minus how much heat absorbed at the evaporator. That difference only the net work input. And desired effect refrigerator means QL. Heat pump means QH. Heat pump also same construction. See, CO, desired effect is equal to QH. QH by QH minus QL. COP of heat pump equal to COP of refrigeration plus 1. You can calculate. Then you see the quotient of performance of energy transfer devices is more than 100. But universally, any system, any engine or any conversion devices, efficiency is 100. But energy transfer devices efficiency, minimum efficiency is 100. That's why energy transfer devices performance is measured by the coefficient of performance, not efficiency. Equation is same, output by input only. COP of heat pump means it is a desired effect is QH, heating. And COP of refrigeration means desired effect is cooling QL. How much heat is removed, how much heat is absorbed, that is a change. But output by input only. But all energy transfer device performance, the minimum efficiency we are achieving, 100%. Okay. Next. One question, basic question. Now visualize the refrigerator also. It's a common question everywhere we are asking. What happens when you leave your fridge door open in the kitchen? It will cool the room or heat the room. The first point, what happens when you leave your fridge door open? We are opening the fridge door. It will cool the kitchen or heat the kitchen. Think yourself. For that uh, real understanding, one more example I will give. Suppose 50 kilos volts of one heat pump or refrigerator removing heat of 50 kilos volts of heat is removing uh, from the uh, defreezer and rejecting 60 kilos volts of the heat in the condenser suppose then you can see what is the network done 60 minus 50 10 kilos volts the so network done is uh, 10 kilos ohms and COP of refrigeration, uh, desired effect is uh, 50 by 10, 5 COP of heat pump 60 by 10, 6. So COP of heat pump equal to COP of refrigeration plus 1. Okay, now I think uh, you may get clear idea. Now you can explain if it is cool the room or heat the room. Why? Because in refrigerator, the evaporator also inside the room only once the door is opened. Condenser already inside the room only. So, this system is operating as a refrigerator and heat pump. Both working. Both at a time working. Generally, air conditioning system is condenser is outside. Evaporator only inside. There is no issue. But here, condenser, evaporator both inside. So, COP of heat pump always 100% higher than the COP of refrigeration. So, COP of the uh, heat pump 100% higher means once you open the fridge door, Cooling efficiency is 100% lower than the heating efficiency. Automatically, it will always heat the room. It will not cool the room. If condenser and evaporator both inside the room, automatically it will heat the room, not cool the room. That's why I given this example. I think you got the clear idea about this one. COP of heat pump is 6, COP of refrigeration is 5. Okay? It's a common question everywhere they are asking you what happens when you leave your fridge door open in the kitchen? It will cool the room. Don't give other uh, type vague answers. 
explain that just COP of heat pump is 100% higher than the COP of refrigeration. That's why it will heat the pump. I think uh, thank you <laughs> with this I am stopping today's lecture. Tomorrow we will discuss remaining topics.